Okay, thank you all and welcome to everything you want to know about the Apex debuggers. My name is Ananya Cha. I am the product manager for the Salesforce extensions, language servers, and debuggers. Joining me today is Randy Wilson. She's an engineer on our team, and we're very excited to talk to you about your debugging experience in your IDE. You must have seen the debuggers in action throughout the conference, but today we are going to be talking to you specifically about the three different flavors of debuggers we currently offer, and then Randy's going to dive into a demo of our replay debugger. Next slide. And as always, our forward-looking statement. So for any purchasing decisions, please make sure that you are making them based on publicly available information. OK, so we're going to start off with an introduction on VS Code and how exactly the IDE fits into your application development lifecycle. Then we're going to talk about the three different flavors of debuggers that we currently offer. And then lastly, Randy is going to tell us about the different steps behind the scenes happening for the replay debugger and then show off our new easy button in the IDE. OK, so what are the Salesforce extensions? As you all must have seen by now, the Salesforce extensions are available to you in Code Builder and in VS Code. VS Code is also known as Visual Studio Code, and it is a lightweight, modern, and free IDE provided to you by Microsoft. The cool thing is that it is different than Visual Studio, which is a commercial offering that you have to have a license for. So with VS Code, you can actually download it directly to your local environment, and then you actually can jump online and see the code powering the IDE behind the scenes. The other reason we really like VS Code is because of how customizable it is. Within VS Code, they have a marketplace through which users can actually download extensions to customize their development experience within the IDE. And that is where our extensions come into play. So with the Salesforce extensions, you're able to jump into your VS Code environment or soon to come to you in Code Builder, and you're able to work directly with your Salesforce information right there in your IDE. So you get powerful language service features like IntelliSense, debugging, and even testing. So today, we're going to talk to you more about that debugging experience within the IDE. So, who are our users now that we know what the tools are? Well, the users are you. Mm -hmm. We've heard from you all that the traditional classifications of admin and developer just aren't accurate anymore. The reality is that you all need to use the right tool for the specific type of job you're doing, whether you're working in the org or you're jumping into the IDE. And so that's why what our development team has been focusing on is making it so we can enable this vast variety of personas that we have across our platform. So now that we know who our users are, when should you be using our tools? Mm -hmm. So that is where ALM comes into play. You must have seen the application lifecycle management featured throughout our sessions today. So ALM refers to the five stages on this wheel. These are planning, coding, testing, pre-production testing, and releasing. Now, this is not a process that is specific to Salesforce. This is a process that any user needs to go through when they are managing and releasing changes to any software application. A few years ago, what Salesforce DX did was it released a revolutionary set of products that redefined what a business could expect in terms of developer tooling from a CRM platform. Today, we are going to be talking specifically about the IDE and debugging experience within your IDE and text editors. So now, let's give it over to Randy to learn more about those debuggers and the different flavors we currently offer. Great. Thanks, Ananya. So to start with the Apex debuggers, a few questions to set the stage for us. So first off, what is Apex? You probably know, but it is the proprietary coding language used in Salesforce applications to manage and manipulate data, which brings us to what is a debugger? A common definition for that is a computer program that assists in the detection and correction of errors in other computer programs. And why do you need one? This might be something that's obvious for you if you've ever tried to struggle with a particularly difficult bug, and anything that makes our users, your developers, job, alive, jobs and lives easier is something that we want to invest in. So more specifically, related to Apex, Prior to 2018, you're probably very familiar that all of your code looked like this. And some of you may still continue to use system debug statements today. But prior to 2018, this was really your only option. So you could add a debug line right in your code to say, I've stopped here. This is what my variable looked like. OK, let me make some changes. I'll rerun it, make some more changes, so on and so forth until you finally figured out what went wrong. 
Transitioning to today, we have our Apex debugger, which we want everybody to be using today instead of those system debug lines. Um, here we are right in VS Code. We have some variables on the left-hand side. You can see on the right, you're also able to have that hover functionality. It's just a much richer development experience, and it makes debugging one heck of a lot easier. So let's talk about some of the specific debuggers that we offer. So first off, let's start with the paid options. On our left, we have the interactive debugger, which if you've debugged in any other language, this is probably what you're expecting. You can view and pause events in real time. But if you're also familiar with Salesforce development, you'll know that pausing time in an org is something that's really expensive, which is why this has to be a paid product for us. On the right side, we have our ISV debugger. And this is something that, if you're an ISV developer, you'd be familiar with as well. And the reason this is necessary is when you're creating managed packages, you're deploying that, org into your, that code into your customers' orgs, but you can't see that code. You don't necessarily want your customers to be able to see that code either, but it makes debugging really difficult. So the ISV debugger makes it possible for you to debug directly in those orgs. Uh, both of these do run from VS Code, uh, so you have that full IDE experience when you are debugging. That leads us to our third option, and the one we're going to focus on today, which is the Apex Replay Debugger. Now, this is entirely free, included with Salesforce extensions today. It's been included for a few years. Uh, we made some recent updates we'll be talking about today. And you can use it with all unmanaged code in all types of orgs. So it'll work with your Apex classes, your triggers, anonymous Apex, and even your log files directly. And we believe that it fits the majority of debugging use cases. And if for no other reason than the fact that it's free, we want you to start with a Replay Debugger and scale up after that if you need to. But because we talked about this is a little bit different than a traditional debugger, let's dive into what makes the replay part of this work and talk about the different pieces of that debugger. So first off, basic step. You've got some code. You've connected to an org. Here what we're looking at is the VS Code uh, with the extensions installed. On the left-hand side, I have some code. And then I've clicked this button here for eBikes org, which launches our org picker, just so I can verify that I am working in the correct environment. Next, we're going to create some breakpoints or, or checkpoints, depending on your use cases. So a breakpoint is where the debugger stops. So where those system debug lines you had before, this is something where you're able to see the code stop and examine it at that given point in time. Thankfully, these can be made on the fly, so you don't have to redeploy your code. You can set the breakpoints as you go, which is really helpful for debugging. Secondarily, we have a checkpoint, which is a more specific Salesforce heap dump, which is a snapshot of all objects at a certain point in time. So they're a little bit different in terms of the information that you get. Uh, with a checkpoint, this can be really useful for things like collections, like a list, a map, a set, anything where you're working with a lot of data and you want to make sure all of that data is correct. Now, contrary to the breakpoint, these do have to be deployed prior to starting that flow of code. And you are limited to five at a time, so kind of have to be actively debugging something. And in order to get those up to the org from VS Code, we have a command, which is update checkpoints in the org that you'll run to push those up. Now let's take a look at what these both look like. So if we're in VS Code, that top red dot is a breakpoint. The dash red dot is the checkpoint. And in order to get the checkpoints, uh, the, the checkpoint specifically enabled, we have a command that is toggle checkpoint. We'll walk through that today. All right, step two, technically three if you're counting. Uh, we're going to create some trace flags in the org, which is just to turn on the debugger. So here we have the command, which is to turn on the Apex log for replay debugger. You run that in VS Code. You can also turn it off once you're done. And what that will do is it will push up your user trace flag into the org. And here you'll notice we're just using that SFDC dev console level. That's perfectly acceptable for starting your debugging. Next, we're going to generate some logs, run some code. So here what we have is our eBikes application. You may have seen it in a few other demos. We'd like to talk about this one a lot. Uh, and so here what I'm doing is I'm calling out to an Apex class um, when I open this Lightning Web component. And now when I activate that Apex class, that's when the logs will begin to be generated in the org. All right. So now I'm going to pull those logs down to VS Code. So we're going to return to VS Code, run get Apex debug logs, which will then query the logs available in the org. You'll see here they're all by me because it's my dev org. So I'll pick one of those. That will download it locally. And then we will have that log file available for us. All right, now it's time to replay. So we're still in the org. We're still on that same log file. We're going to go ahead and right click and launch Apex Replay Debugger with current file. And so that is what will actually activate the Replay Debugger. So we'll start right at the top of that log file. We can go ahead and press the play button when we're ready to actually jump into the code from there. That will jump us back to our Apex. You can see I've stopped at the point where I have that breakpoint set. I can begin to now walk through my code and even set other breakpoints on the fly like I'll do here on line 33. Now I can press the play button again, continue the flow of execution. You see on the left, I have those variables that are set. I have hover available, all kinds of really cool stuff. 
So let's review. There's a lot of steps. So for our more advanced flow of the replay debugger, which is available today, we have some code. We create some breakpoints, create some trace flags, generate the logs, pull the logs down to VS Code, and we get to replay. Super easy, right, Ananya? I don't know if that sounds easy to me. What about you guys? <laughs> Not to me. <laughs> is there another way we could do that? Yes. Well, turns out now there is. Our team has been working hard at creating a more interactive replay experience. So now you can get access to our replay debugger with just one click. So here is our guide to your Apex replay debugger and the one-click debugging experience. So here we are within our product explorer within the eBikes project. As the PM, I have told Randy that we need to increase the maximum size or maximum price that we are offering for our bikes. As we all know, inflation has been rampant recently. <laughs> so it's really important that we have a higher tracker over there. And so today, Randy's project is going to be to increase that max price. Let's get started, Randy. Yeah, so I've made some changes already. I think you're going to be pleased so far, but the tests aren't working just yet, so I'm hopeful we'll be able to work through that kind of quickly. So let's go ahead and pull up my org. So here, oh, I already had that one open. Uh, so here, we're in our product explorer. You can see that I have that 20,000 updated as you expected, and I'm pulling that new data. But if I go back to Visual Studio Code, you can see here, that my tests are failing, which is kind of a bummer. And I made the changes kind of late last night, so I'm not sure if it's my code or uh, the test changes that I need to take a look at. So have you tried using the replay debugger? Yeah, I think that's the only way we're going to get through this in enough time for this demo today. So to run you through kind of what the changes are that I've made here, I'm in the test setup. I've got two products previously. So they were both pretty cheap, 1,000 and 1,200 respectively. So I went ahead and made a third product for 17,000, which is a fancy e-bike, even if by e-bike standards. Uh, and it's a racer level, because I figured this will be something that's a little bit sportier, too. So now we get down into this get products method. And I've updated the max price, and I've updated the levels. And this is where the failures start. So I think now is going to be the debugger point. So I know for debugging, for the replay debugger, I can click this button, which is debug test. That's a code lens. Or I can kick it off using this cute little bug icon on the side. And they both will activate that same process. So let's go ahead and click that. And now what's happening in the background are all of those steps we talked about before. We're connected. We've got our checkpoints. We've uh, turned on the DPA, replay debugger, uh, generated. I can't even remember listing them all out. But all of those steps that are happening are all happening behind the scenes for us. And I don't need to remember the order in which I run them or if I've done them uh, correctly or not. But it doesn't look like we stopped. I feel like we might have forgotten something. Yeah, so step two, breakpoint. So it's really a two-step debugger. Um, but here, in order for you to be able to debug, you need to put a breakpoint in the code. Otherwise, the debug will run, and it'll just say, oh, well, it looks good to me. I don't, no concerns. So let's go ahead and run that again. So again, it's really important that you remember to put in that breakpoint before you go ahead and start off your one-click debugging experience. All right. And here we are. So here's the magic we talked about earlier. We have now entered into the replay debugger through our test. So I'm going to go ahead and step through here, because uh, I really want to get into uh, get products and see if that's where the issue is. So let's jump in here. So I did some walking over, and then I stepped into this class and, and can now jump into the method I'm looking for. So here I'm down at get products. And I'm going to jump down to the bottom here, because I think the issue I had was there wasn't the correct number of records. So I'll put my breakpoint there. And then I know I changed two things. So I changed the price, and I changed the levels. So let's put a breakpoint here at max price and go ahead and play and jump down quickly to that. Now, that looks correct. So I've got 20,000 there. Let's go ahead and add another one at levels, make another jump. So uh, I don't know about that. Ananya, what do you think? Uh, well, I'm no engineer, but <laughs> I want to say I feel like we messed up our quotations. Yeah, yeah. As a previous developer, I think you would know that. <laughs> Definitely. So think we're missing some quotations. And it maybe isn't super obvious the way I'm looking at it here. But if you've got some uh, super sharp eyes like Ananya does, you can pick that out. So let's go ahead and jump down to results here and see, it. yep, zero records. That's where our failure is happening. So let's stop this. And then I think this would actually be really clear if I was working with checkpoints instead of breakpoints. So here I'm going to go ahead and toggle this into a breakpoint. So toggle checkpoint, checkpoint, excuse me. 
and then also do the same down here for this result. And I'm going to go ahead and modify this one manually. So when we are toggling the checkpoint, this is really all we're doing behind the scenes is just changing this expression to checkpoint. And now, if I'd like to, I could upload those manually. But because of the easy button replay process that we have simplified and streamlined, I don't need to do that now. So when I run this again, those will automatically be updated for me. So I don't need That's those. pretty cool. Yeah, save you a couple clicks. And the exciting thing is you can always see what's happening behind the scenes if you take a look at what's happening in this output menu down here. Mm -hmm. So you'll always be able to see what those specific steps are that Randy mentioned earlier right there in that output menu. Exactly. So yeah, let's take a look. So here it's, it's now pretty obvious, right? I don't have two different items. I've got a beginner comma racer bike, which doesn't really make any sense when you think about it. And then when I jump down to result, I can also expand here. And this just gives you a little bit more rich information than you would get using the breakpoint. So let's go ahead and stop this. And yep, there's some missing quotations. Let's add those in. I'll now save that. And I have save to deploy set on. This is a special setting in the extension where every time you click the Save button, it deploys to the org automatically. Super helpful. Uh, speeds up development as well. Debug one more time. Hopefully, we don't have any more issues. <laughs> it's hard to tell when you're debugging. Ugh, ain't that the truth. <laughs> OK. All right, that's looking good. And now levels. Yep, I've got two items there, as expected. And results is also looking like a happy camper. So we've got three records, as expected. I'll hit the play button and let that test execution finish. And now I've got the bright green button. So it looks like everything's good. Very exciting. All right, take a photo of this real quick. This is, uh, I don't have quite enough time to go through all of these today, but it's good reference information. We'll hopefully have a blog coming out soon, kind of diving into these as well. The three I want to highlight are the bolded ones. So for log levels, we've gotten questions about what are the log levels I need to use. Default is plenty. The dev console we called out earlier is plenty to get you started. That sets Apex code to finest, Apex profile to info, system to debug, the rest just at info. If you need more, you can adjust it as you need, just doing that manually. However, the log limits still apply, which is why we recommend setting that log level just to the level that you need it, uh, because you might find that you get to the end of that log and you still don't have the information that you're looking for. Um, so if you do find that you're like, I've tried to narrow down the code as much as I can, and I can't get to that point in my, my flow of code that I need to, that might be the use case where the interactive debugger would be necessary. And finally, with one-click debugging, that is also available in our anonymous Apex and directly from our log files. Uh, so we don't give you a button just yet. However, if you right-click uh, either on an anonymous Apex Apex file or a log file from VS Code, you'll get that launch Apex replay debugger with current file, and that'll set off the same process for you. So back to you, Ananya. Awesome. So thank you so much, Randy, for telling us so much about our debugging experience within VS Code. And the important thing to realize is that now not only will you be able to debug in VS Code, but coming this summer, you'll be able to access all of this functionality in Code Builder as well. So behind the scenes, it is all the same tooling powering Code Builder too. And so thank you all so much for coming to our session today. If you are interested in learning more about the new and exciting things our team has been working on, you can please check out our next session, where I will also be presenting with another member of my team. Um, and we will talk to you about what has been new and exciting within the Salesforce extensions. So these will be about the fun features that we'll be releasing in Code Builder this summer and what is currently available to you in VS Code already. Thank you all so much for attending our session. And we hope you learned a little bit about the replay debugger experience and how to access it from your IDE. Next on this slide, <laughs> thank you all for the applause. We still have some more information. <laughs> you can take a picture of this slide. Um, we have a link to our GitHub up top. So like I mentioned earlier, our team is entirely open source. So something that we're really investing in this year is our open source community. We're looking to get more contributions from you all. And if you're ever running into any issues or you want to see us actively working on something, reach out to us on our GitHub because our team is reviewing that GitHub every single day. And then at the bottom, we have a link to our documentation site to help you get started with your IDE development. So thank you all for joining us today, and I hope to see you at our next session. Thank you.